I bet you didn't have anything to eat. No time. I'm late as it is. Yeah, I know. I'm not the only one knows. Beat it, Mario. Get us a couple of cups of coffee, will you? What, did the boss say anything? What's her to say? She knows why you're late as well as I do. You had an appointment to see about a part in the show. And in a couple of weeks, you'll be back with your hat in your hand, asking Miss O'Malley for your waiter's job back again. I appreciate the fact she takes me back. She knows that, Charlie. I think she's took you back for the last time, Sam. It happens once more. You quit because of a show, or you're late because of an appointment. And you're going to get packed in. Sacked. Fired. However you want to call it. Look, Sam, I know how you feel. You figure that waiting on table, you ain't doing... Well, you figure you ain't doing what you ought to be doing. Well, let me tell you something. I've been a waiter all my life. And I've been very happy being a waiter. The head waiter wants you to at your station, sir. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, sir. Being a waiter may not be what you had in mind for your life, but it's something, as opposed to nothing. Don't lose it, Sam. Thanks, Charlie. What's the matter? Uh, uh, switch tables with me. Take my number eight. Somebody out there you don't want to see? Switch. Switch. I'll take your table 14. I can't do that, Sam. It's too far away from my station. Number 58, now boarding on track one for Detroit, Buffalo, well, that's Syracuse, it. the coast is up ahead, New York City. I've just got to. Sam, let me go with you. Just a little while longer. Then as soon as I can, I'll send for you. If you're sure you want to marry an actor. I wouldn't marry anybody else. Hey! I'm a makeup kid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Away from me, I'm frightened. Bob, Barbara. Sam, why do you have to go? Because time goes by too quickly. I'm four years behind. I spent four years with death, and they took four years of my life, Barbara. And I found out then how precious life is. It's got to be used for something worthwhile. A man has got to do the thing that's most important to him. I don't know, honey, it can be climbing mountains or, or building skyscrapers or whatever. The one thing he thinks he'll be able to do best, at least he's got to try. Don't you see, Barbara? I don't have any choice, darling. All aboard! Here we are! Hey, Helen! <laughs> You're fighting me. Hi, Marge. Here. Woo! There you go. Oh, thanks, Helen. Hey, did you see the papers? Quick. Hey, that's great news. Listen, the great news is just starting, Sam boy. If there was ever a wrong time to leave a thriving town like Lansing, Michigan, this is it. Oh, maybe so, Ellen, but not for me. Look, everybody's got wild dreams about what they want to do, but well, what's really important? Uh, to you, Ellen, or to me? You know, everyone doesn't see things the same way, you know. Sam, oh, Sam! <laughs> Wait me tomorrow! Night, honey, tonight!
Good evening, Mrs. Leglevsky. Well, John Barrymore himself. And how are things on the Great White Way? I've got a reading for an off-Broadway group on Houston Street. And from there, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to Broadway. <laughs> sure it is. Uh, you're a cynic, Mrs. Leglevsky. A cynic? <laughs> I take an actor's. I expect to get the rent every week. That makes me a dreamer. Well, I've been a good tenant for almost a year now, Mrs. Kowalski, right? Well. I'll get you two tickets to opening night. Just keep getting me the rent. I'll be a happy woman. Thank you, Mr. Novak. Thank you. All right, next, whoever's out there. <clears throat> All right, let me straighten you out. The actor's rostrum is a group that's going to put on not only one play, but a lot of plays. We're getting the nucleus of a company together right now. That's what these interviews are for. So, uh, what have you done? Uh, well, Not that I... it matters. I don't go by that, what you've done, baloney. Anyway, it's what you're going to do that counts, right? Yes, I, I would now, say... we're going to do a lot of things. Chekhov, Pirandello, O'Neill, Kaufman, Hart, new plays. The pay is nothing per week, but it's a showcase, and a good one. Every producer and agent in New York City is going to come down here because the plays I direct are going to be brilliant. I like your looks. Any questions? Just one. Shoot. During performances, will I talk or will I just move my lips while you stand backstage and say the words? You ask the question, now I'll ask one. We need backers. You got anything to invest? What's your answer to that? So long. Hey, fella, wait a minute. Hey, fella, hold it. Listen, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you for a minute. Listen to me. Look, I don't have any money, so why waste your time? Who wants your money? Well, you asked me if I oh, had... I asked. Is that a mortal sin? Look, I want you in the group. Let's discuss it over lunch, huh? One dog with a sock. Hold the muscle. You don't know if I can act or not. You don't know what experience I've had. As a matter of fact, you don't know anything about me. Now that you're a good type, I like your approach. You're not a lot of talk. That's more than I can say for you. Oh, will you uh, take care of this? Uh, my uh, trust fund only pays off the first of the month. Okay. Well, what do you say? You with me or against me? No, I I've got to make some dough. I've been living on 52.20, 20 bucks a week for 52 weeks. Veterans Rehabilitation Allowance, and I'm up to my last few weeks, and that's it. That's a sign you're just about rehabilitated. And as a reward, I'm going to put you on the cushiest job you've ever had, market research. What's that? You go around interviewing people, you know, asking them what they think about different things, like new cars, length of women's skirts, gold standard, the color red. You get some interesting answers from bulls on that one. 20 interviews a day, and you can live like a king. Well, an ex-king. Now, it sounds like it would take up too much time trying to find 20 people with nothing better to do. Who finds people? I wouldn't stoop to interviewing anybody. I fake my 20 while I'm shaving, and I'll figure yours out at breakfast. Which reminds me, um, where do you live? I've got a cold water flat on 3rd Avenue. 3rd Avenue? Well, that's a lovely neighborhood. You married? No. Still, I guess uh, your place is jumping all the time with the bimbos in and out? You mean girls? I don't mean girls' brothers. No, no, no girls. No girls? Mm -mm. No. You do go out with girls, then. No, I don't. You like girls? Of 
course I like girls. What are you telling me that you don't? I'm engaged to a girl back home. What a relief. You know, this is your lucky day. You got a partner show, a job, a roommate, Novak's the name. Maury Novak. What's yours? Lawson, Sam Lawson. But I... Lawson, I that's short enough. There'll be room for you on the mailbox. Now, this is a cold water flat. Aren't you used to better things? I'm used hmm? to the lap of luxury, but her husband came home. Okay. But it's only temporary, because I've got other plans. Uh, hasn't everybody else got other plans? You know, the next time I give a formal dinner party, I'm going to serve these for appetizers. They put me right in the mood for lunch. How about it? No, I don't figure I could learn anything at lunch. Hey, I could learn a few things from Barrymore myself. One, please. Two. Two. And now, wait a minute, Novak. I don't... Count your blessings, Sam. Just think what lunch would have cost you. Now, you write this down. I want an accurate account of everything I owe you. Come on. Let's go in and see Jack. your wife, my grandmother's. Sam, I, I couldn't stand it away from you any longer. I, I tried, but I, I just couldn't do it. I missed you so. Oh, Barbara. Barbara, you sure you want to stay here? It's, it's too tough. It, I, it's over a year now, and I'm nowhere near a job. What about the actor's rostrum? In your letter, you I'm not getting paid for it. I'm just barely supporting myself. Just barely with a part-time job. Sam. Sam, I got a job. What? Well, I knew how you'd feel, so the first thing when the train got in this morning, I got a job. Have you ever heard of Sunshine Sandwich Shops? Are you waiting on tables? I can't let you do no, that, Barbara. I, I'm, I'm not sorry. waiting on tables. I, I'm a spy. I, I go around all the shops and, and see if the waiters shortchange people and things like that. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun. Barbara, here? Are you sure you want to stay here? Of course, Sam. Excuse me. Oh, hi, Maury. Now, come on in. Come on in. You must be Maury Novak. Sam's written so much about you. I'm Barbara Nielsen. Hello. And goodbye. I just came over to pick up a few things, but they can wait. Well, don't let my being here stop you. Well, it won't. Oh, Sam, over. come here. Look, uh, I'm moving out. I found myself a new roommate. Oh. It looks like uh, we both did, huh? So long, Mark. Do you still love me, Sam? Hmm? Do you still love me? More than anything else in the world, Barbara. Well, then kiss me. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Lawson, I congratulate you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Samuel Lawson. I've tried that out so many times, I'm used to it. You know that if we had 50 bridesmaids, 20 ushers, and Tuscanini playing the wedding march, you couldn't have been more beautiful, darling. Oh, oh the rice. Oh, that's my job. Look, uh, give me the rice. Oh, give come me on, the honey. Rice. Let's All go. Right. Right. Come on. <laughs> oh, Michael. I can't make it. Well, if I have to Just one more river to cross, and the country beyond is ours. Michael, the country beyond.
Did it again. Without number the audience. We've been open here a year. And nobody seems to have gotten anywhere yet. Sam, I didn't tell you, but I had a call about going to California. Just a technical job. Well, Hollywood? It's not an offer yet, but I have an appointment to talk about it. You know, when you least expect it in this business, you can get a break. And it can happen to you tomorrow, Sam, at Kensington's casting call. I have some of my notices, Mr. Kensington. If you will just spare me a minute. I'm just looking for types today. It, it'll only take a minute. Maury, will you look at that? Don't beg him, Sam. Whatever you do, don't beg him. Next. Next, please. Michael Moore, Mr. Kensington. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Sorry, there's nothing for you in the play. Next. Next, please. This is Mr. Kensington. How do you do, Mr. Kensington? Sam Lawson. I'd like to read for the play, Mr. Kensington. Donald, the son. Yes, Mr. Kensington. He, he does look the part. I'd love to read for it, Mr. Kensington. I'm afraid not, though. I've never seen you do anything. But if I look right, if you'll just let me show you what Readings I Readings don't mean a thing. I've been taken in too many times. Sorry. Next, please. All right, all right, Mr. Kensington. If you want to see me on stage, you can, right now. I've seen everything that's running now. I don't remember you from anything. I'm playing the lead in a new play, The uh, Country Beyond. That isn't on Broadway. The Actors Rostrum production. Oh, what's that? It's in the old Siemens Mission off of Houston Street. Performances every night but Sundays. <laughs> I'll take it easy, son. I can't trek all the way down to off Houston Street. It's not hard to get to. I'll tell you the truth, I go that far downtown, I get the bends. <laughs> <laughs> it's your duty to see him, Mr. Kensington. He gives a great performance. Oh? Who's this, your agent? <laughs> this is Maury Novak. He directed the show. Wow. I want to wish you both all the luck in the world. Now move along, please. Hey, uh, Mr. Kensington. Don't beg him, Sam. Mr. Kensington. Bob? Bob? Just come on. Oh, will you wait just a second, please? He Mr. Kensington. See you. How are you? Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> nice to see you. Bob, this is Eric Peters. You remember I called you about him? Oh, yes. How are you, Peters? Hello, Bob. I was under the impression we had an appointment, Bob. Well, so was I, lady. Uh, your secretary told me 10 o'clock, Mr. Kensington, and then I stand in line all the way back to 8th Avenue. Take it easy. Shirley, why don't you and Mr. Peters wait for me in dressing room A? I'll be a few minutes. All right, Bob. Come on, Eric. Now, look, son, would you rather I didn't hold open calls? You actors are always complaining about no open casting calls. Mr. Kensington, as long as you come and see our show. Well, well, if you don't trust a reading, you can see me on stage. Next, please. Yes, now, will you please allow me to get along with this? Sure. Well, yeah, sure. Next, please, come on. Oh, yes, the director. I'm sorry, but... I know. I'm not the type. Next, move along, please. Sorry. You think you'll come? Go up, Sam. You wait nothing. What do I tell Barbara? She had her hopes up. Hold that, honey. Waste not, want not. See, Maury, why don't you come by tonight and explain to Barbara what a squirrel cage it was? Huh? I got a date. Well, bring her along. I don't think Barbara would appreciate it. Well, why not? She's my landlady, Sharon Kensington. Matter. His his daughter. Yeah. This is great, Mary. Get her to drag him down to Houston Street. She hates him. There's a park, Maury, and this is the chance to get her. What are you talking I'll about? I'll bring her along. <laughs> oh! Listen, I'll see you tonight, huh? Right. Don't forget, I'll bring her. Sam? Yeah. I just lay down to take a nap. Mm -hmm. Hello. Oh, hello. Mm, 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 mm. Certainly in a good mood. Well, it's our anniversary, isn't it? And I've got great news. What? You've heard of Robert Kensington, the producer? 
Yes? Well, Maureen Ovac knows his daughter. We're going to get her to get Kensington down to a performance. Oh. Oh, I thought maybe the news was more tangible. Oh, Sam? Yeah? Sam, I've got good news. What? Come on. Never mind. Out. Out. Uh -huh. Out. Out. You're going to build a suspense, eh? Uh-huh. Honey, do we have a corkscrew? Uh, in the top drawer of the dresser. It gets us in town. Marjorie and Ellen Burke. How did you guess? Well, they're the only people from Lansing we know who ever come to New York. For some sort of, uh... Annual wholesalers convention. They want to hmm. take us to a supper club. I brushed a blue suit. Honey, wait. I can't find the corkscrew. What do you want a corkscrew for, anyway? For the cork and the wine bottle. Wine? <laughs> what are you talking about? Papa, you look... I haven't worn this dress since the last time Marjorie and Alan were in town. I know. You mean you plan to see them tonight? Mm -hmm. We can, Barbara. I invited Maury Novak, and he's bringing Sharon Kensington. Sam, this is a real party. Well, so is this, honey. I can't put on my pink dress and sit around here with some unwashed... Barbara, Barbara, don't you see what's important? Sharon Kensington... But on our anniversary, it's a year today. We can't, Barbara. Maury oh, is... Oh, Maury, what about Ellen Burke? He was your best friend in Lansing. Well, we're not in Lansing now, honey. Well, if friendship doesn't mean anything to you, Sam Lawson, does it mean anything to you at all that I'd like to have a little fun for a change? All right, honey, we'll go. I'll call Maury. He'll understand. Am I a terrible problem to you? Yep. I'll call Maury. Not just yet. I told you it would take a while to have them develop. Well, now, why don't you see if you can speed it up, huh? What do you say? Thank you, sir. I'll have them in a jiffy. Hello, baby. Ellen, I wish you'd let me take care no, of them. No, no, none of your Confederate money here, boy. I told you, the party's on me. So I said this is positive the last time. Well, just teach you never say this is the last time about anything, because here I am, pregnant again. Oh, I think it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, you know, the Indians had the right idea. Keep them pregnant in the summer and barefoot in the winter. <laughs> you must be terribly happy. Hey, what about you, Sambo? Got a little stranger on the horizon? Oh, no. No, I'm afraid not. Oh, not even a glint in Papa's eye? Alan, stop that. <laughs> well, let's get with it, boy. We're gonna have to put more men on the job. <laughs> well, that's crude without being funny. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, I am happy about the baby, but I wished it was all over. At this stage, I feel like I'm in a Chinese torture chamber. The gas is so bad. <laughs> hey, Sambo, come here, will you? Uh, you girls talk about books or something. I got some business with my old buddy here. Listen, you old villain, I got a proposition for you. I could use a good salesman. What do you say? You mean me? Let's cut out the hogwash. We're all horse thieves together, you and I. Now, give me a straight answer, huh? How you been doing? Things are a little tough now, Hey, Alan, hey, hey, but... this is Alan you're talking to. I have very high hopes, Alan. Here we are. Oh, good. <laughs> you folks should all be in pictures. Speak of the devil. That'll be a dollar a piece, please. Oh. Barbara, give me some money. Dollar a piece? Here you are, honey. Buy one for yourself. Oh, thank you, sir. I tell you, your money's no good here, you rascal. I'm buying everything. Is that a deal? Let's shake on it. What do you say? Come on, Barbara. We're going home. But it's early. Come on, Barbara. I'll call you tomorrow, Marjorie. I don't see why you have to run off now. It's the shank of the evening. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, but the night's on me. I may be broke, but I'm not a charity case. Come on, Barbara. Couldn't you relax, 
and tried to have some fun. It's fun. fun to see Alan Burton throw as much money away on one evening as it cost us to live for two weeks. Don't be envious, Sam. And then he tries to slip me money under the table. Well, maybe he should have kept it. I didn't mean that. I just mean money is money. And Marjorie dressed up to the ears, and you in that pink formal you wore to the senior prom. That's my lookout. Well, it's my lookout, too. I'm your husband. Then do something about it. Sam. Oh, Maury. Oh, this is uh, Sharon Kensington. Well, how do you do, Sharon? It certainly is nice to. Sharon. He said he was your friend. Oh, come on. Oh, hi, Barbara. Hi, Sharon. Uh, this is my wife, Barbara. Hi. Come on in, honey. Maury, how'd you get in? Oh, I, uh, I never turned in my key, Rumi. <laughs> you were expecting us, weren't you? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, make yourself comfortable, will you, Maury? Uh, would you like a drink, Sharon? Huh? I'm forbidden to have another drink. Sharon. It's part of my instructions for the evening, isn't it? I can do anything except be myself. That'll be enough. Just be quiet. I get a kiss. Um, Sharon, would you like some wine? Sweet. No. Wine, honey, wine. That's not a drink. Oh, this is very hospitable of you, Saul. Uh, Sam. Sam. Mm-hmm. Sam. Sam. Oh, what a lovely name. I love that name. You know, the first man I ever completely destroyed was named Sam. He's a hairdresser now. Well, here's to all of us. You know, you're really nice. I could tell when I kissed you, you were nice. That's still the only foolproof way to judge a person's character. <laughs> Don't be mad anymore, Maury. Oh, shut up. Isn't he perfect? He has only one flaw, though. He won't drink. I got enough problems. And I'm very suspicious of anyone who won't drink. Aren't you? Aren't you? I mean, it's as though they're afraid of what might come up. I believe you're right. I'll have a glass of that wine, Sam. Oh, good, Barbara. Uh, Sharon, Barbara and I were talking about your father and his new play. And oh. uh, I went down to uh, Sam about it. He said I was right for one of the parts. Yeah, I believe you are the brother or something. Yeah, that's right. Well, we were thinking, if you could get him down to the actor's rostrum some night this week, we, why don't we... <laughs> get my daddy out of midtown Manhattan? Yeah. <laughs> the gargoyle? <laughs> I know. Son, I go that far downtown, I get the bend. <laughs> <laughs> Maury, that's great. I don't go uptown either. Get above 59th Street and my nose bleeds. That's daddy, all right. <laughs> That's Kensington right to the teeth. That's a great imitation, isn't it, Barbara? Huh? Sorry, I can't appreciate it. But I've never met Mr. Kensington. Oh, put your hand now, Cookie. You're marvelous. Well, I, I know he'd enjoy it, Sharon. Once he got down there, I know he would. Well, I just think it's a marvy idea. I think Daddy should go down and bring it uptown, and we'll all be rich, rich, rich. You're nutty. Then will you marry me, Maury? You're a real nut. If it happens, will you marry me? <laughs> I'm serious, Maury, will you? Hey, you are serious, aren't you? Yes, I am. Promise me you'll do it. Oh, no, Sharon. If it runs as long as that hit you were in. Crocodile tears? Yes, crocodile tears. Then will you do it? Will you marry me? All right, I'll marry you. Barbara, do you know that Maury was once in a play that was a real hit? Yes, Sam, you've told me a thousand times. 368 performances are ran. Well, what's it like, Maury? Tell Barbara what it's like to be in a real hit. No, it's nice. Crocodile Tears was nothing but a farce, you know. But still, there was something different about it, something fresh. It was like you uh, worked in a small town where skilled craftsmen and a few artists got together and made a special kind of pottery that was made nowhere else in the whole world. Of course, later on, Hollywood took it, made four others just like it. 
But still, it, it was a, a wonderful feeling to know that you were in at the beginning where they made the original piece of pottery. It was just wonderful. Isn't he marvelous? Um, how long did it run, Maury? 368 performances. 44 and a half weeks. And you haven't worked in the year and a half since? No, Barbara, you're right, I haven't. Well, you'll have to excuse me. But I'm suddenly appalled. I'm just appalled. Barbara, please, you don't need to do this. Do I'm this. sorry. I come from a world where you don't even get a vacation until after you've worked a year. Let's be honest, Maury. Wouldn't it be a lot more practical if you just got a good, steady job making pottery? Yeah. And that was on one glass of wine. But you could start a war on a hook or a bourbon. We better go, Sam. Thank you for everything, Barbara. It was nice of you to come over, Maury. Uh, Sharon, it was very nice meeting you. Sweet. And the, the best time to bring your father to a performance would be the beginning of the week, before he casts his play. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to skip the possibilities of him seeing it this week, Sam. Why? I didn't want to spoil the party, but the actor's rostrum was going to be dark. Well, we didn't even make the rent. Oh, no. Well, don't worry, Maury. We, we'll bounce back. The week after that, or, or maybe even the one after that. Sure, but I, I'm afraid you'll have to bounce without me. You know that Hollywood job I was talking about? Well, it came through. The, the dialogue director. Well, Maury, that's great. Well, it might lead to better things. Yeah, it will, Maury, it will. Good night, Sam. Oh, good night, good night. Sam, I just love that name. Do you know that the first man I ever completely destroyed was named Sam? We know. He's a hairdresser now. Come on. Better parties, I'll say that. So that's the end of the actor's rostrum. Oh, not necessarily. Just because Maury quit the group. Too bad. Could have had so many delightful evenings with Maury and your friend Sharon. Oh, now, Barbara, are you jealous? Now, is that it? I'm not jealous of anything except that she can eat whenever she wants to. What is it, Sam? Is it a disease? Well, you can call it that, but for me, it's my life. It's the thing I want most. You call it a disease. Then you really didn't mean it when you said you wouldn't marry anybody but an actor. Let me think about that. Let me walk out into the terrace of my penthouse apartment and think about that. Barbara, I hate this. Don't you see that? I, f I feel terrible every day I come home and realize that I haven't come through for you. So I just keep trying. But now all I can do is say, I'm sorry. Oh, so Sam, let's go home. Oh, Not for my sake, but for yours. Lansing, they respect you. Everybody likes you. you. Get a good job. But don't throw away your life here on something that doesn't care whether you live or die. Barbara, this is my life. Well, it isn't good enough, Sam. It isn't good enough. It isn't good enough. Well, if that's the way you want it, you want it twice as rich as good enough for our baby. <laughs> No, for sure until today. I wanted to tell you tonight when we were out with Marjorie and Alan, I wanted for once to have something to contribute. Sam, I want to be alive too. Don't be unhappy. Please don't be unhappy. When? Not for a long time yet. Oh, be happy, sweetheart. It's a baby. Something holy happened to us. Ba Barbara, honey, you've got to give me one more month to try and get a job. That, that's all I ask. And if I don't make it, we'll go home. All right, Sam. Is it? 
Miss Drake? I can't see anyone today. You'll have to have an appointment. If I could just have a minute, Miss Drake. A minute? I just might give you a minute's worth of truth that would be very painful. This is just the day for it. I've got to talk to you. This is my last now, chance. Now, look, would you please... Have you been in here before? I spoke to you once, just for a moment. My name is Sam Lawson. I was wondering if there are any replacements coming up in any of the shows. I am going to help you. Miss Drake. Go back home. I can't. Why not? Because I belong here in the theater. Oh, yes, yes, I know. You're going to be a great star someday. Well, that isn't what's important, but people do become stars. People escape from submarines, too. Isn't the handwriting on the wall? I just haven't been able to get my foot in yet, like with you. I, I wrote you and I called you, but I wasn't able to see you until today. Well, now you've seen me. What makes you think anyone's going to pay 480 to see you? You mean I don't look like Eric Peters? Exactly. But I can act. They wouldn't pay 55 cents to see you at the actor's roster. I know, I know. How did you know we charged 55? I well, uh, how... How were you? Yeah. You were good. You lack experience, of course, but you have talent. I had talent. A lot of it. For three straight seasons, I went from one show to the other. Never missed a paycheck. Then for two years, almost three, I didn't work at all. Not one single week. But I have to eat. And so does Agnes, and so does Elvira. Elvira's my mother. I don't like her very much. She doesn't like me very much. Agnes is my mother's cat. I don't like her, and she hates me. That's what's left. After all the pay envelopes and all the curtain calls. You saw Kensington? Uh, they're all cast. They're going to rehearsal next Monday. They need an assistant stage manager who can understudy and do a bit. Kensington owes me a favor. It's Drake. I shouldn't waste a favor like this. Oh, well. Go on. He's probably at the theater. I'll call him there. Now, listen, I can't promise anything, but go on. Well, go on! Yes. I knew there was a job. I knew you did. You could almost smell it, couldn't you? Barbara! Barbara! Barbara, it happened! It actually happened! I got a job in the theater, honey! Honey, what is it? What's the matter? He said it wasn't even a baby yet. What? I was just walking along the street. This car took me to the hospital. Barbara, what happened? I lost the baby. He said it wasn't even a baby yet. What a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry. I love you so much. I'll take care of you, Barbara. Sam, I'm going back to Lansing. Barbara, we, we don't have to go home now. I'm going to take care of you. I've got a job in the theater. That's what's really important to you, isn't it, Sam? That's what you really care about. Now, trust me, Barbara, trust me. This is for both of us. It can be the beginning, the real beginning. It's always the beginning. We're always right on the verge. Sam, I don't know you. I don't think I've ever known you. Barbara, it can't end like this, not us. Who 
said anything about another war. All I said was that we must do something immediately to strengthen our defense. All right, take a five minute coffee break. Lawson. Yeah? Here's Sam at your notice. Now look, Jimmy. Jimmy, I, I don't understand. Now tell me why. Sorry, Mr. Kensington's orders, but I thought your agent told you. No. No, she didn't. I can't talk to you any longer, Mother. Ye yes, I'll call you back just as soon as I can. What happened? What is this? I, I show up for rehearsal and I, and I find another actor reading my lines, doing my pieces of business? Sam, I'll explain to you. But I don't understand, Shirley. Sam, what, what, I'll what? explain if you'll just listen. Look, Kensington did me a favor and gave you the job. A friend of his, an old friend, was out of work. They're favors and favors. Well, I'm not blaming the actor. I know you're not. He needs the money very badly. He has a wife and child. Now put some two up on me. I'm sorry, I didn't know. Kensington feels badly. He wants to make amends. He's sending out a road company of party favors. Pay you starvation wages, but I thought you might be interested. For what part? Cop, understudy the second lead. Cop. <laughs> Where is it going? Everywhere. They open in Los Angeles, the Biltmore Theater. And Maury Novak's with one of the studios out there. He's directing now. Maybe yeah, I could pick up some work. Sure. They come back across the country. Denver, Kansas City, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, Chicago. Where else? Detroit is the closest they get to Lansing, Michigan. Tell them I'll take it. All right, Sam. Well, thanks, Shirley. You've made a traveler out of me. Year's tour. I miss you. Me too. I'll send you a palm tree. I'd like to see Maury Novak. My name is Sam Lawson. You don't have an appointment. Oh, just tell him I'm here. I'm sure he'll see me. Well, I'm sorry, but Mr. Novak can't see anyone without an appointment. Take a chance and call him. I can't interrupt him now. He's in conference. Now, look, all you have to... Mr. Novak, I don't know how to thank you. Oh, you'll find a way. Sam Lawson. Hi, Maury. How are you? Good, Maury. Good to see well, you. It's good to see you. You got a few minutes? I'm going over to the Eric Peters set. Why don't you come on along? We'll chew the fat. Swell. Wonderful. Oh, well, I'll be on stage four if L.J. calls. Huh? Well, you people don't mind waiting just a few oh, more yeah. minutes. Oh, oh that's oh, all no. right. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 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 We'll wait, Mr. Let's Robert. go. Yeah. Come here. Well, this is the new Eric Peters picture. Eric Peters. Wasn't he a client of Shirley Drake's? Used to be. He has four agents now. And a personal manager, and a psychiatrist, and a lawyer, and a tax counsel, and an ulcer. I'm sure. But he's the hottest new property in the industry today. You know, I've been trying to talk him into going back to Broadway and doing a play. That's him. All right, quiet, please. This will be picture. Let's have a red light. Turn him over. Speed! Action! One shot! Cat! Cat! That was beautiful! Good. Uh, 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 u
Yummy, Eric, just yummy. Now watch for next month's issue of Screen Rates, won't you? Oh, you're too kind, dear lady. <laughs> Chair, Chair for Mr. Peters. Hello, Pinky. How's the world's greatest agent? Oh, hello, Maury. <laughs> By the way, which of those uh, takes did you like best? Oh, the third one. The third one had a lot of fire, Eric. <laughs> That's interesting. We only did two. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, this is Sam Lawson. Eric Peters. Pinky Bonaparte. Hi. Hi. Come on, Angel, you got a publicity date. Your fan club from Sacramento. 35 screaming broads just waiting to bite your T-shirt off. Fine. You see, I'm just in the mood to bite back. <laughs> hey, Eric, by the way, how did you like that uh, play script I sent you? Anytime you want me to direct you in it, just say the word. Novak, you're a traitor. Trying to bury my boy in New York for a whole year? So long. Bye-bye. Eric! <laughs> it's amazing. What if? They're both left-handed. Yeah, let's get out of here, Sam. Sam, I'll get Eric Peters in a play if it's the last thing I ever do. And it'll be the biggest hit Broadway I ever saw. Sam! Been great, really great. Oh, listen, Maury. I got a chance tonight and tomorrow night to play the second lead in our show. I'd like you to come down and see it. We're down at the Biltmore in Los Angeles. I live by one rule, Sam. I never go down into Los Angeles. Make your nose bleed? That's about it. Look, Mr. Sam. Novak. Yeah, honey. Mr. Novak, LJ's been trying to reach you. Be right with you. Look, now, next time you're in, a, in town, you stay with me, understand? You stay at a hotel, and I'm going to be insulted. Mr. Novak. Yes, oh, I'll give my best to Barb. It was Barbara, wasn't it? Yeah. Are there any messages for me? No messages. Oh, hey, Lawson. Yeah. Company. Mr. Lawson? Sam Lawson? Yeah. Well, what's this? Summons. Divorce action. Oh, good night. Oh, say, I loved your show. It was real funny. It was all I could do to keep from laughing right out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Sambo, you old horse thief. Oh, Sam, you're wonderful. Well, uh, how are you? Thirsty. I adored the clothes. Good to see you, demon. How's it going? Well, I expected Barbara to be here. Instead, I got this. Yeah, yeah, we heard about this. It's too bad, Sam. Is there anything we can do, boy? Just name it. But at least let us buy you a drink. Let you buy me a thousand, Ellen. I'll be down in a minute. <laughs> I've got that. Yes, I'll hang on, Miss Drake. Uh, uh, Sam Lawson to see Miss Drake. There's a gentleman here to see you named Sam Lawson. Miss Drake. Miss Drake? Miss Drake! Sam. Sam, it's really you! Oh. Well, Shirley, this is something. I haven't had such a greeting since the liberation of Paris. Well, it's just that I'm so glad to see you. It's been over a year. How are you? How was the road to it? I saw America. How have you been? How's Agnes? Oh, she died six months ago. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no, Agnes was the cat. Elvira's my mother. Oh, that's better. <laughs> How is she? Oh, she's fine. <laughs> she's got a new cat, Constance. Now, Constance hates me worse than Agnes ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, let's have lunch tomorrow and talk ourselves out, huh? Fine. I can't today. I've got Maury Novak in there. He's doing the new Kensington play, and I'm in on the casting. Thank heaven. Uh, you mean the Eric Peters play? Oh, no. He couldn't get Eric Peters. We're looking for somebody else now. Sam. Sam, you'd be perfect. 
Oh, no, 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 Shirley. I'm... Well, Maury and I are... Listen, this is a wonderful opportunity. Come no, on. No, Shirley, no. Come on. Please. Oh, thanks, Murray. Mr. Novak, you remember Sam Lawson? Well, well, he's here, he's there, he's there. Oh. Hi, Sam. Hello, Maury. I was thinking Sam might be right for the lead. Yeah, yeah, not, not a bad notion at all. Yeah, let's talk about it. You remember Sharon Kensington, don't you? Oh, sure, sure. You brought her over to the apartment once. Yeah, well, I'm going to meet her over at Old Malley's for some cocktails at 5.30. I thought she was married and lived out west somewhere. She was, Texas, but she divorced him. She couldn't stand being away from New York City. Her psychiatrist is here, you know. <laughs> Why don't you come on along? You know how women are. They're always late, especially Sharon. And uh, we'll have time to talk. Fine. Right? See you Monday, Shirley. Anytime. Here's to the new play. I'll take your good wishes on the play, Sam. I want to open Christmas night and get great notices. You know why? I got a new contract coming up with the studio the first of the year. I want to take those notices and beat my salary up so high that every once in a while, they'll have to let me do a script like Flame at Dawn just to keep me from being unhappy. Now, does that sound backwards? Mm -mm. You know, an expensive guy costs a lot more when he sulks. I still like good pottery, Sam, more than ever. Nothing else really counts much. It's nice to see the theater can still be of use. Oh, by the way, how, how's things with you? Uh, how's Barbara? It is Barbara, isn't it? Yeah, Barbara, she's fine. And I just got a card from her at Christmas. Yeah, where is she? In Lansing, she just had a baby, according to her card. <clears throat> I didn't even know she yeah, She married an awfully nice guy. Got an automobile agency, does pretty well. She was a nice girl. Yeah, she was. Maury. About the play, when do you plan to go into rehearsals? No, not for six or seven months yet, if then. I'd love to read for you, if I'm right. Oh, you're right, all right. You're perfect, age, everything. That'd be great, Maury. I mean, us working together again. Two more, Charlie. Yes, sir. I'd, I'd love to have a copy, a copy of the script over the weekend, study it. Uh, when do you plan to hold the reading? It isn't set yet. Well, it'll have to be pretty soon, won't it, if you're leaving for the coast? Sam, about to play. We're old friends, right? Can I level with you? You mean like the old joke? Can you stand a little honest criticism? You're fired? No jokes. <laughs> okay, level. I'm not going to ask you to read for me, because you wouldn't get the part. Well, why not? This stuff evaporates in the open air, you know? The part needs a name, Sam, a star. Like Eric Peters? Eric Peters earns $4,000 a week. Oh, come off it, Maury. Nobody, absolutely nobody, earns $4,000 a week. But the part needs a... The part doesn't need a star. Maury Novak needs a star. An insurance policy against failure. Will you get off my back? Stop chipping away at me. That's what you're doing, chipping, chipping, chipping. If that's the way you feel about it, I'm sorry. Don't bug me. Let's just forget the whole thing. I'll see Sam, you around. don't go, please. I, I apologize. It's this stuff. Try me, Maury. This part could do wonders. I can't. What the hell is my career? A shuttle train to nowhere? I can't get a part because I'm not a star. I'm not a star because I can't get a part. That's right. Then how am I going to make it, Maury? Maybe you're not going to make it. Maybe you haven't got it. I have, Maury. I've got talent, and you know that. Helen, talent's not what I'm talking about. That's what you start with. I'm talking about that extra whatever it is it takes to get you off of the shuttle. The con, moxie, the hootspaw, whatever you yeah, want to yeah, call yeah, it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. The politics, the office manner, the cocktail party line. I can't do it. I've never been able to do it. Then learn or get out. But when there's a pot... No, no. Sam, try and understand. I'm going to do better than that, Maury. I'm going to try and learn. Mr. Novak, you want this other drink? No, oh, I've got no use for it now. Anything the matter? 
Would you like that for a friendly gesture? You stole my coat. <laughs> Mr. Kensington's apartment is K. A left. Thanks. Is Mr. Novak here? He is not in. Uh, excuse me. Is Mr. Kensington here? No. Well, uh, this is Mr. Novak's coat. He's, he's right. got mine. Would you have him send it to... That you, you miserable dog? Hello. I'm Sam Lawson. I got Maury's coat by mistake. There was a script addressed to him here, care of Kensington. It was in the pocket. Where is he? I know where he was. Come in. Well, come on in. Yo, show you bring us some more ice. <laughs> you know how to make a scotch and soda? Mm -hmm. You're perfect. So far. There's the bar over there. Where was he? In O'Malley's restaurant. You're lying. He had a date to meet me there at 5.30, and he didn't show up. Well, I was there until 6, and I didn't see you. Well, what's half an hour? Wouldn't you wait half an hour? I'd wait. You're sweet. I think Maury got drunk. Well, <laughs> you must be a good influence on him. He had to get drunk, so he could tell me I'm not going to make it. Are you going to make it? Yes. I am. Good. Is it double? Yes, ma'am. I've been drinking doubles all day. It isn't good to switch. I thought you went to see your psychiatrist. No. No, I canceled the appointment. <laughs> I called up my doctor, and I... I really hit him where it hurt. <laughs> I called him up and I said, Doctor, I don't believe that I'll be able to come in for my appointment today because my horoscope says I can't leave the house. <laughs> They're all alike. Who? You too, probably. <laughs> Isn't that awful now? Here, I just met you, and I'm being so mean to you already. I met you a long time ago. This is awful, but I don't, I don't remember you. I remember you. But don't tell me what I said or did. Oh, I get the cold chills about anything I ever said or did. Oh, you said nothing? Did nothing wrong? You're sweet. And if you're lying, I don't want to know about it. You can talk about the future all you want, but please don't talk about the past. Okay. What are you going to do with your future? Well, I think that I'll drink scotch, and I'll smoke cigarettes, and I'll be very good at it. Is that all? Don't. I make all the passes. You make the drinks. You realize that on English ships, you can buy the best scotch whiskey there is in the whole world for a dollar and sixty-five cents a fifth? I'd imagine. Now, what do you say that you and I take a trip around the world on an English ship? And we sit in the bow with a pitcher of ice water and a fifth of scotch apiece. And we just see everything. There must be something to see. Miss, phone for you. 
I told you, Yosha, I'm not home to anybody but my psychiatrist or that man from the liquor store. <laughs> it's Mr. Novak. Maury. Maury, hello. Maury! Maury, answer me! Maury, answer me, you miserable rat! Maury, why don't you answer me? All right, all right, not so loud. You got the phone going for you. Why'd you stand me up this afternoon? Because you couldn't stand up? Oh, I'm sorry, darling. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I... What made you think I was drinking? Maury, don't be that way. Maury, don't be that way. I need you. You don't need me, baby. You need a sanitarium. Oh, that's cruel, Maury. That's cruel. Just, just because I had one little drink. Well, that's one over the limit for you. Maury, why don't you come over? Why don't you come over, Maury? I promise you I won't take another... Well, what's the point, baby? By the time I got there, you'd be seeing double, and I don't think you could handle two of me. Mari, don't hang up! I trust that you'll be comfortable, sir. I believe you and your lovely bride will find the honeymoon suite most pleasant. Sam. <laughs> Thank you. The gargoyle wants to talk to you. <laughs> hey, you, not so fast. Come here, I've got something for you. Hello, Mr. Kensington. You're in very mediocre company, my friend. Sharon's first husband was the worst office boy I ever had. She was in Mexico divorcing him. She met a no-good pup who ran a 21 game. He was her second husband. The last one was a rich moron, an oil-rich moron. You like the company? I hear you're an actor. I uh, worked for you once. Yeah, so I hear. I don't remember you, but I know actors. I know them, and I hate them. Now, look, boy, you've no idea what it takes to make a success in this business. I know. I made one. But I did it by sweat and by labor, not by marrying the boss's daughter. And if you think that'll do it, you're sadly mistaken, my friend. Not while I am the boss. All you get is very sadly mistaken. I bet he wants to kill us both, doesn't he? Now, you'll take this telegram out tonight for me, you understand? Right away, right away. It's, it's the most important message ever sent. <laughs> ever sent. Lori? <laughs> yes. It's a special engraved wedding announcement. <laughs> oh, I just give the world to see his rotten face when he reads it. I just give the world. <laughs> I hope, oh, Sam, I hope it makes him. <laughs> I hope it makes him cry. Husband, aren't you going to carry me across the threshold? Well, husband, aren't you going to do that thing? Aren't you going to carry me across the threshold? Sure I am. I don't think you'd make it any other way. Thanks, Marie. Sponsor's already signed these radio contracts. You want to look them over? And did you get the clause about the right to take four weeks off for an out-of-town tryout if I should get a play? Mm -hmm. 
but that was a tough one. The radio people don't like that. I think it gives them an inferiority complex. I wouldn't have gotten it at all if Kensington hadn't. If Kensington wasn't my father-in-law? I wouldn't even have a job if Kensington wasn't my father-in-law. Got a pen? How's Constance? What? Mm -hmm. Oh, she's fine. Thriving. Mother's not well, though. She broke her hip. Mm. It's tough. I don't know when she'll ever get out of bed. Sam, congratulations on your anniversary. You've been married a year today. Sharon Kensington Lawson, she's his daughter. And hubby Sam, he's lead on Man of America, an up-and-coming radio drama produced by Poppin'Law for Regal Foods, are celebrating one year married in the silliest way. He's in New York. She's been in Hollywood the past three months, dangling from the arm of Maurice Novak, screen megaphoner. Hmm. Hmm is spelled H-M-M-M-M-M-M. -M 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 -M. Shouldn't write things like that. People seem to like to read them. I didn't mean to hurt you, Sam. Nobody can resist being catty once in a while. That item doesn't mean a thing. Sharon wanted a vacation. Maury's an old friend. They'll print anything to fill up space. Maury cast his play yet? Not yet, but he will be soon. Interesting. Sam? Yeah? Listen, I'm part agent and part old friend. You've been talking to the agent. Could the old friend say something? Mm-hmm. I've seen you when times are tough, but I've never seen you like this. Surely Sam, don't. you're going to listen to me. You're miserable, and I know why. You're a good human being, but you've stepped out of character. From the day you married Sharon, you became the worst thing a person can be, a self-deceiver. Self-deceiver? Oh, that's the last thing I am. Now, wake up, Shirley. The whole world's full of people who'd give anything to sell their souls to the devil. The only trouble is the devil doesn't want them. Oh, that's fine. That's great. You go right ahead and be cynical. That's the easy way. It's the truth. The only difference between me and the rest of the world is that I got off lucky. The devil made me an offer. And has it made you happy? Happy? What kind of a word is that, happy? Who's happy? Are you happy, Shirley? You're not talking about me. Well, maybe it will. Maybe it'll make me very happy. Never. You won't even be a good opportunist. The good ones come by it naturally. Wait and see. All right, the old friend's finished. Well, the old friend's wrong. I'll be a good opportunist. Never. Never, Sam Lawson. Never as long as you live. Well, at least the agent never had it so good. That wasn't necessary. I don't want you to be sorry, Sam. I don't want you that way. I mean, I don't want you to be that. Hollywood? It's all right. You had a suntan? Sort of. I'll try and catch up. There's something I want to talk to you about. I didn't want to write to you. I wanted to tell you in person. I want a divorce. Did you hear what I said, Sam? I want a divorce. I know this hasn't been very nice for you, and I know that I haven't been the greatest wife in the world. But if you can please forgive me. You're forgetting a vow you made about matrimony. A vow you broke. You flatter me greatly if you think I can be the one to forgive you for that. I know that. 
I know I was wrong, but I want to start being right. And just how do you propose to accomplish that monumental feat? Sam, I'm going to have a baby. Maury? Yes. I'm in love with him, Sam. For the first time in my life, and maybe the only time, I'm in love. Maybe it's the baby, I don't know. Maybe I've finally gotten proof that I'm a woman. And to be in love is not something I don't deserve. Straight from the psychiatrist's mouth. Well, it's true. It's always been Maury. Yes, it has. And now he wants me. Wake up, Sharon. You know Maury. It's not you he wants. It's his child. The most important A number one piece of pottery in his whole life. He wants it. And he wants it so bad he's willing to buy the oven. Now that's the truth and you know it. I don't care why he wants me, he wants me. And that's the only thing that matters to me now. This time it's different. Yes, it is. This time it's completely different. There's a whole new ingredient, Sam. It isn't compromise. It isn't convenience. And it isn't sex. It's love. Sam, I used to think there wasn't such a thing. But now I know that I just forgot it. Like a hope you give up on until you suddenly feel it again. Sam, you can understand hope, can't you? Yes. Yes, I can understand hope. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I knew you'd understand. No divorce. Oh, Sam, don't say that. No divorce. Oh, Sam, please. Please, Sam, anything you want, anything at all. There's no stealing, Sam. No divorce. This is my last chance, Sam. <laughs> I beg you. Don't, Sharon. Don't beg him. You can't get a favor by begging. <laughs> you want something in return, don't you? And it's nothing Sharon can give. You know, eventually she can divorce you, even if you won't go along with it. Time is of the essence. The two of you made it that way. What is it? Money? Hollywood? You want me to open doors? Okay, you can play the part in the show. Come on, Sharon, let's get out of here. You learned, didn't you, Sam? I had a good teacher. tomorrow morning. fight scene still needs work, Maury. I'll go over it tonight. That won't be necessary. Okay, but when we get back to it... You and I won't get back to it, Sam. What are you talking about? I'm replacing you. <laughs> what is this, a gag? No, it's no gag. Eric Peters is available. He had a fight with his studio, and I'm bringing him in from California. Maury, 
I can be great in this part. I'm bringing Peters in. So this is the double cross. Sharon goes to Reno. I hold up my end of the deal, and, and now you back out. Was this the plan all along? No. Or did you get the idea when you received that telegram announcing the availability of, of that star of stars, Eric Peters? I've been thinking about this all week. If you want the truth, the fight scene in the first act curtain is... That fight scene's going to be great, Maury. I didn't believe it. Oh, don't. Don't, Maury. Don't you give me that. Now, you tell me the truth. You tell me how those Hollywood producers are going to come running to Maury Novak when they hear he's got the prize of the year. When they hear he's got Eric Peters, the biggest movie name in America, the star in his new play. Well, I'm backing out too, you see. I'm going to, I'm going to fight that divorce till you're both old and gray. Okay, fight. Here, 2,000 bucks. That's a starter. Whatever else you need, I'm good for it. Oh, that fixes everything, doesn't it? That preserves your precious integrity. And I hope this is the biggest hit in history. You're on the run of the play contract, and you can collect your salary every week. That's conscience money, Maury. To make you forget you're a dog. I don't have to listen to this. Oh, you're slipping, Maury. You can't look me in the eye when you put the knife in. You didn't believe the fight scene. You're a liar. I'm the boss. Maury? Kill you. Do you hear me? I'm gonna kill you. You won't know where or when or how, but it's gonna happen. Do you hear me? I'm gonna kill you! I swear it, I'll kill you! I'll kill you, boy! I'll kill you! Sam! Do you hear me? I'll kill you! What's the matter with you, Sam? You going crazy? Don't you recognize the first act curtain speech to your own play? Hey, that is the first stack curtain speech, isn't it? <laughs> How about me being taken in like that? You sure had me going. You know, a whole audience bites like I did. We got a grand slam. <laughs> I feel better about the whole operation, Maury. But, boy, you sure started the old adrenaline going. <laughs> Could I use that drink now? How about it? Yeah, I'll join you. Sam? No, no thanks. You know, I should have put some of my own money into this one. Hurry it up. Management's buying. He believed it, Maury. Has Sam Lawson been here? No, Miss Drake. He's been replaced. I know. But I thought he might have left some word. If you do see him, tell him to get in touch with me right away. It's very important. Yes, Miss Drake. I'll tell him. Well, for goodness sake, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you and calling you. Why don't you answer your phone? What is all of this? I was going to stop by to see you before I left. You don't have to go anywhere. I've got you a job. <laughs> well, what's so funny? <laughs> no, isn't that a coincidence? Just today. <laughs> Just when I got another offer, and I get to do my specialty. 
What are you talking about? You know, Shirley, a specialty like singing, dancing, telling fortunes, or doing card tricks. Stop being flip. What's the job? And I've got a very special specialty. Going in advance of an artillery battalion and observing. Just observing. You're joking. The Army spent a lot of dollars teaching me to be observant. Now they're requesting the use of my services. Actually, it's a little stronger than a request. You see, I'm in the reserves, and they say they need me. Voila. Lieutenant Samuel Lawson, subject active du... Oh, Sam, they can't do this to you. They've done it. It won't be so bad, Shirley. I can't say Korea is a place I've always wanted to visit. But I think after Broadway, I'm going to welcome a nice, quiet war. We'll be going home soon, Captain. Yep. Mara, you're going to have a flock of good people to choose from. My vote goes to a guy named Sam Lawson. He's cute. Yeah, that's what the normal, healthy American should be. Cute. <laughs> he's perfect. And you say he's good? He's great. Then we don't have to see any more actors. Call him in. Let's talk to him. Right. Mr. Lawson. Hold it a minute. Before we make any commitments, I think we'd better see if he's clear. Well, what do you know? Were you ever a communist? Of course, I was never a communist. You were with a group called the Actors Rostrum some years ago down in the village. Well, that had nothing to do with being a communist. I never even knew a communist. You knew Maurice Novak. Of course, I knew... Maury. Last week, a congressional committee... I know, I know. I read the newspapers. His studio just canceled his picture contract. That has nothing to do with me. I never joined anything. Nobody can say I did. You were with the actor's rostrum. The agency and the television people found out. Found out? Well, from whom? Who's accusing me? Sam, these are very responsible, patriotic people. They're just trying to protect their country. Oh, Sam. <sighs> don't. Don't, don't shoot. It's not your problem. I'm a big girl now. Suppose you let me be the judge of that. Okay. I never said I understood women. No, you could certainly never make that claim. I'll try to get you a play. Thanks. How's, um... Vira? My mother? I got her name straight this time. She died several months ago. I didn't know, Shirley. Oh, it's, it, it's the best thing, really. I prayed for it. That hip never healed. 
Alice, the current cat, isn't eating. It looks like I'm finally rid of cats, at least. The one bright side. I'll check with you. Oh, Sam. Sam. What are you going to do? There's only one thing for me to do. Survive. Oh, yes, sir. I'm afraid the dining room isn't open yet, sir. I know. I wanted to ask you... If you care to make a reservation, I can accommodate you either before 6.30, sir, or after the theater crowd. If that would be acceptable, sir. I don't want a reservation. I want a job. A job? Yes, sir. Come with me. Sir? Well, thank you, sir. I hope you enjoyed your lunch, sir. Well, Charlie, Charlie, check out my stubs for me, will you? I'm in a rush. And Charlie, if I'm a little late for the supper... Sam, time, I... you've yeah. been working here quite a while now. Yep. How many flop shows you had in that time? I try to forget flops, Charlie. Well, the boss don't forget them. The flops, or the times you're late for work because you had an appointment. Look, Charlie, all I'm asking is, if I'm a little late, you try and be a friend and cover for me, okay? Hmm? Okay. Oh. oh. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Thanks, anyhow, for thinking of me. I wish we could be working together. Actors as good as you are rare. Look, I'll give you a call in the next play, huh? Thanks, Jack. Don't bother. Hi, Sam. Well, what do you say? Nothing. I'm speechless. Shirley told me I'd find you here. How you been? Employed, thanks. How's Sharon? Pretty well for a woman with two children and a husband that can't work. I'll use my influence with my boss, Maury. If you're interested. I want to talk to you. I'm going to have a job for you if you want it. You opening up a restaurant? I'm a waiter now. And I heard uh, I'm going to do a new play. and It's a good play and you're just right for it. How come? Can't you get a star? I'm not going to do it uptown. I'm going to do it down in Greenwich Village. No producer thinks it's commercial enough for Broadway and they're wrong. It's, it's a good play. So you're doing it off-Broadway and you're paying everybody $40 a week. Don't tell me it's the old Siemens mission. That's right. Tell me something, just out of curiosity. Was it true? Were you ever a communist? Yeah, for a short time. Why? I never believed in it. Never had a political thought in my head. Then why? There's more than one way of being an opportunist. It served my purpose at the time. Sure it did. It's a good part, Sam. No thanks, Maury. I've been had. I'm through grabbing for the bones you toss. There's no meat on them anymore. But this is different. I don't need you anymore, Maury. I've got something. Something steady, comfortable, and respectable. I've got a job. You like being a waiter? I like getting something in return for what I do. I like that very much. The part I want you for, it's the star part. Well, I hope your show's a big hit and you bring it uptown to the house next to O'Malley's. It'll be great for our supper business and boost my tips. So I couldn't wish you anything but luck. You don't mean that. I mean it, Maury. I never meant anything more in my life. 
I'm sorry, I gotta run now. I'm late for work. Your orders? Have you decided on anything, Barb? Waiter, what would you reckon? Hello, Barbara. Sam. You two know each other? Matt, this is Sam Lawson. You know. Sam, this is my husband, Matt Hemsley. Well, how do you do? How do you do? Gee, this certainly is the small world apartment. <laughs> yes. Hey, I want you to sit down. Oh, I'm afraid not. The rules of the house. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. What are you doing in town? Are you seeing shows? Uh, just tonight. We're leaving for Europe tomorrow, aboard the Liberty. Oh. Liberté, darling. Ah. Say, how's everything in the show game? You're still in the show game, aren't you? Well, I'm kind of at liberty at the moment. Or at uh, Liberté, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara knows what that means. It means in between engagements. What would you hey, want to order? Barb, we, we, we better get going if we're going to get to that show on time. Oh, oh. yes, we better. Well, it was... Nice meeting you after all these years. Maybe uh, we'll see you again sometime. Yes, yes, I hope so. I'll uh, wait for you at the door, Barbara. We probably won't see each other again sometime, you know. I know. But I'm glad this one's happened, Barbara. Yes, so am I. He seems like a very nice fellow. He's a wonderful man. I'm glad, Barbara. I've been very happy, Sam. I, I have everything I ever wanted. A home, husband, children. I've thought about you many times these past years, Sam. I, I've wanted to talk to you, to apologize. Oh, there's no need for that, Barbara. I'd like to apologize for not understanding. I do understand now. Every time I, I read a book or, or see a painting or watch a movie that makes people laugh or, or cry, I, I think to myself, now I know what Sam was trying to do. You were trying to contribute. You, you wanted to give something. and The only thing you had to give was yourself. Sam, I, I'm so proud of you for knowing what you wanted and fighting so hard to get it. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. But I haven't made it, as you can see. Knowing you, Sam, we haven't settled for this. Now I understand, and it all seems so obvious. Maybe that's what understanding is, discovering the obvious. Poor Matt, he's, he's waiting for me. Goodbye, Sam. And good luck. Change their minds. Sam, where are you going? I'm going to see a man about a play. Oh, Sam, I thought you saw the point I was trying to make. I did, Charlie. I saw it perfectly. Then stop hurting yourself. Accept what you are. That's just what I'm going to do. Accept what I am.
five minutes. Shirley? Shirley Drake? Hello, Maury. Hey. How's Sharon? Oh, fine. It's over at O'Malley's. Having dinner, I said I'd go over and pick her up. Hi, Sharon. I, I was coming over to get you. I'm just waiting for Sam. Oh. oh hi, Sam. Well, here it is, the second night. The reviews are all in. Looks like we're going to get a big season out of this. Looks like it. Yeah. Congratulations, Sam. No one ever deserves a success more than you do. Oh, boy. Success makes everybody friends again. How about a drink, huh, Sharon? I'm already had enough. There's nothing worse than a reformed drunk. Hey, Sam. How about you and me? A little drink after the show? Oh, no thanks, Maury. I'm meeting a friend. Oh. I get the subtle distinction. Well, thanks, Maury. But I never figured I was subtle. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, Sam. Listen, I've got great news. Kensington agreed to a run of the play contract on our terms. Good. Mr. Lawson, we won't go up till we get word from the front of the house. Fine. Thank you, Paul. We got a movie offer. The money's awful good. But I think we ought to wait for a specific picture, don't you? Yeah. Anything you say, Cheryl. Fine. And let's see now. We've got a... A couple of other little things, but I guess they can wait till tomorrow. Mm hmm Well, I think I'll go home and feed Prudence. Prudence? The cat. <laughs> I thought you finally got rid of cat, Shirley. Well, I did for a while after Mother died, and then one day I went out and bought one on my own. I guess I got so used to cats after all those years. It's better than nothing. Something alive around, you know. I uh, Shirley. Mm hmm why don't you go home and feed Prudence, and then after the show, maybe we'll go around the corner and get a sandwich or something, and some coffee. I thought you said you had to meet a friend. Don't you qualify? Well, I hope so. Thank you, Sam. I think that would be very nice. All right. I'll pick you up. Did you see the marquee? Yes, I did. Why did it take so long, Shirley? You give a wonderful performance. Perhaps a great deal had to happen to you to make it what it is. Shirley? Shirley, what's the matter? It just suddenly seems like so rotten, so... Such an awful one-sided bargain. No life, no family, no home, just existence. And all those precious years for what? A name on a marquee. Places, please. Sam, tell me something. Warning. Curtain. It doesn't matter now. It's over and done with. But tell me, was it worth it? Curtain going up. Was it, Sam? Was it worth it? Yes. Yes, it was worth it. 